And welcome back to Maker's Corner. Today we're making these awesome little LED cube lights. They're pretty easy to make and they don't cost very much either, so if you're ready, let's get started. So to start off this project, I'm going to be using this 0.03 inch thick piece of acrylic sheet that I had lying around. You could easily get this at any hardware store. And I'm also going to be using the rest of the 3.5 inch uh, wide pine wood that I had left over from last week's tea light candle holder project. The first step is to cut the acrylic to match the width of the wood we're using. I'm going to be doing this by clamping the wood to the acrylic sheet and using it as a guide to score the acrylic with a plastic cutting tool or utility knife. Once we have a deep enough cut to no longer need the wood as a guide, I will remove it and finish scoring the acrylic freehand as to not risk damaging the wood. Once we're finished scoring the acrylic deep enough, I will clamp a piece of scrap wood along the cut line to act as a brace while we snap the acrylic along the score line on the side of the table. Now we can move on to the miter saw to cut our wood into perfect squares. If you don't have a miter saw, you could easily do this with any number of tools such as a table saw, circular saw, jigsaw, bandsaw, or even a handsaw or hacksaw will even work if you don't have any power tools. Once we're done cutting all the wood, we're going to move on to cutting the acrylic to the same size as the wood we just cut. I'm going to be using my miter saw again for this, but you can use any number of various other tools for this part. And the last piece of cutting is going to be a wooden dowel to wrap the LEDs around later on in the project. Next, I'm going to take the wooden blocks we just cut and give them a light sanding to make sure the top and bottoms are nice and perfectly flat. After sanding the wood, we can move on to using some epoxy to layer the wood and acrylic together. I like to use very thin coats of epoxy so that it doesn't leave any gaps between each layer of the wood and acrylic and then I'll use some clamps to compress everything tightly together while the epoxy dries. Now before going any further, I'm going to give the entire piece one more good sanding to make sure that all the sides are nice and evenly flush with each other. After everything's been sanded smoothly, we need to find the center of the bottom piece of wood by using a ruler or straight edge to draw a line from each of the corners to find the center location where we will drill the hole for all of our electronics. Next, I'm going to use a spade bit to drill out the center hole. To do this, I'm going to tilt the piece on its side to eyeball how far I need the drill bit to go in, and then mark the maximum depth of the shaft on the drill bit with a piece of tape so I don't accidentally drill all the way through. I'll be honest, a forcener bit would probably be better than a spade bit here, but I don't have any forcener bits right now, so the spade bit will just have to do. So go on and take your time with this, as you want the hole to be as straight as you can possibly get it. A drill press would be a fantastic tool to use here if you have one. Alright, so now we're going to drill a smaller hole in the back for our power plug to sit in. Again, take your time here as you really don't want to be making any mistakes this far into the project. And now for the fun part, we get to start staining the wood any color you choose. I'm using this red oak stain because I really love the rich color it gives the wood, but you can use any color you like. Now 
After about 15 minutes, I came back to wipe off the excess stain, and then I gave it a couple more hours to set before moving on to the next step so that I didn't accidentally ruin our freshly stained piece of wood. Now we can move on to electronics. I'm going to cut the power socket off the strip of LEDs and I will run the cable down into the hole we drilled out for the power plug. I ended up having to use a hammer to convince the plug to fit in the hole as it was a very tight squeeze. On the bright side, I know the plug is very secure and won't be able to move. Once that is done, we can wrap our LEDs around the wooden dowel we cut earlier and then cut the rest off that we don't need along the indicated cut location on the strip. And now we can insert the LEDs into the hole and strip the thick outer insulation from the power cable to expose the positive and negative wires inside. Now we can add some shrink tube to the wires to protect the connections after we've soldered everything together. Don't judge me too harshly here, I'm usually fairly decent at soldering but this iron is on its last leg and was not making things easy here. Come to think of it, I do have a birthday coming up, wink wink hint hint to certain people watching this video. And now we've finished soldering, we can use the shrink tube we just added to the wires to secure the connections from shorting out on each other. At this point we can now shove all the wires into the hole and then use some more epoxy to secure everything in place. Once this is done, the last thing to do is to cut a piece of foam, felt, or any other material of your choice and attach it to the bottom to seal everything up and protect the surface of whatever you decide to place the LED cube on. And that just about does it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's project, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing to Maker's Corner, and don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you'll always be notified whenever I upload a new video. Well, I gotta run, so as always, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you all around the corner.